games were in Indiana, this one's in Chicago. How do you think that impacts anything and what kind of energy are you expecting out there today? Uh, I think, um, you know, anytime you get to play at home, um, that's an advantage. Like, you you know, so these guys having us on the road twice, you know, we've been lucky enough to come away with those wins. Um, these guys getting us at their place, all the emotions going into it, you know, um, <clears throat> just, you know, for me and my team, we just try to make it about the next game. And so we try to take away all that outside noise and, and just focus on what's next for us in Chicago. Skies, what's next for us? You know, it just happens to be at their place tonight. Christy, last year when you were in Atlanta, I remember talking about you getting pretty injured still before games and I was thinking about that at your last game now with you've won four in a row and you're a year into this how would the pregame emotions change for you not, not at all <laughs> <laughs> still the exact same um it's just you just try to re, you know think about everything that could possibly happen um, in the game, and you know try to do everything to help your players have some sort of advantage or just be prepared. You don't want them to ever go in not prepared. But once the ball goes up, that just kind of seems to go away. Have you figured out how to use those emotions differently as you've had more games under your belt, or is it still just I got to do my job and deal with them as they come? Yeah, just pretty much got to do got to do my job. Just got to have the, the, those players prepared. The group of uh, Caitlin, Kelsey. Melissa, Leah have been really crucial in the last four games. What has, it, what has impressed you, whether it's on the court, off the court, about how that group has played? Yeah, just the basketball piece. I mean, they're really, um, it's really exciting to see them finding each other uh, the way they are, their chemistry on the court, um, their timing. Um, you know, there was a lot of passes early that we just, you know, we weren't able to finish those. And, and now we're, we're ready for, you know, those passes are um, the opportunities that in transition when, you know, one time we would be running into this area when we needed to be going somewhere else, looking at the spacing, like all those things that we've been able to, to watch um, up to this point and make adjustments to. So just the timing and the chemistry, it's just really exciting to watch these guys and um, the attention that all of them, um, that they take, it just really allows for some great opportunities for other people as well on the court. Christy, kind of piggybacking off that, how important is the Olympic break going to be, especially because you guys didn't have a whole lot of practice time early in the season because you had so many games back to back to back to back? Back to back to back to back. Yes, yeah. ma'am. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, it's, you know, it's just going to be great for um, – for all of them, I mean, we'll have our, our 12 there who can practice and we can work on things, spend some time um, doing things that we haven't been able to do that you just can't implement in a day, you know, before you go play. So just to have that and then, you know, also during that break, you also get a lot of team time. You get, you know, to spend time with each other where there's not games so you can, you know, do team events. Um, you know, we've got some things planned for them that we're really excited about. When it comes to Tammy, I know she's been back at practice for a while. So the kind of just return to play conditioning at this point for her? Yeah, Todd giving me the thumbs up. Like that's all I'm waiting on is Todd to give me the thumbs up. She's ready to go. She's, you know, she's been getting workouts in. Um, we haven't practiced in this last, you know, week because of the games, but um, she's been involved um, with what we've been able to do. Coach, uh, how would you assess Caitlin's pick and roll performance so far? I mean, she is an incredible passer. And so the, you know, the way people are guarding her, if they read her, which is double team or, you know, hard hedger. I mean, she's just gotten um, an understanding of what to do in those moments, whether that's, you know, back out ready. Like she is just ready for that next pass. Um, as long as, you know, and our team, our team is really working at coming to where they, she can find them. And then that puts us in an advantage situation. So then we're attacking. She's just done a great job handling those situations. About a month, but have you noticed a progression from the start of the season training camp to, to where she is now? Oh gosh, yeah. I mean, across the board for her, for our team. I mean, there's just been, you know, we're just uh, we just want to keep growing every day, getting better every day. Bounce off that feels like some of her ball screens have been higher up these last couple of games. Am I seeing things, or so what went into you guys deciding to do that? Yeah, sometimes that just gives you a little bit more space to work in. And that, you know, just uh, according to how they're going to guard us, maybe that gives us a little more room to, you know, flash some place, players up and then have the advantage uh, attacking the basket. Coach, can you comment on the challenge of guarding Marina Mabry? She's a tough one. <laughs> Uh, she's talented. I mean, she is a gamer. She's going to put the ball in the hole. She's going to find a way to put the ball in the hole. She's got great size on her. So, you know, if we have a guard on her that she feels that she can, you know, take in the post. So, um, you know, she's she she's a challenge. And we, you know, we're hopefully able to find a way to, to slow her down a little bit. And um, do, do you see any similarities with the way that teams defend um, Marina and the way that teams defend Caitlin? 
Um, you know, a lot of Caitlin's is with the ball in her hands. A lot of Mayberry's is with the ball out of her hands. So, it, you know, it's a little different. Like when the ball's in her hands, you could see some similarities because people just want to get the ball out of their hands. Caitlin, you don't listen to music pregame, but you had your headphones in. What was that? that was an I had to do an interview. Yeah. Yes. These wonderful people wanted to talk to me. <laughs> I'm a horrible multitasker, so it was like really hard for me, but got it done. Yeah. Yeah. I think Tamika has like reached out after you know every single game, whether it's been a, a win for us or a loss. And I know she's been at a few games. Obviously, she's busy and everything that she has going on too. So, um, been one of the most supportive people. Was there. I met her the first day that I arrived in Indianapolis. Um, just obviously a great resource for myself to have and everybody on our team to have. And. Um, you know, our film room is named after her, like the championship trophies in our locker room. So she's like the epitome of like who we want to be, not only as basketball players, but like as people. Like she's one of the best there ever is. So, um, yeah, she's been nothing but supportive. Kaylin, I'm sure you've seen the All-Star voting returns. Um, I'm curious, have you ever actually had a chance to play with Angel? And how fun do you think that could be if you both end up making the All-Star game? <laughs> A lot of hypotheticals. I think I think both of you would probably or both of us would probably tell you like our focus is on definitely playing basketball and you know if that works out for the both of us, great. Like it would be a lot of fun. We've never played together, so um, yeah. I mean, I guess I don't really know what all goes into how they select the All Star team. I'm new to the league. I know fan vote is part of it, but there's also a lot of other criteria. It's not just fan vote. So um, yeah, I mean, she's had a, a tremendous season, and you know if that was to happen, I'm sure you know people would love it. Yeah, I think it'll be tremendous. Um, obviously, a little bit smaller of an arena, so a harder ticker, ticket to get. Um, I mean, I expect that to be just a full, uh, like a whole game of just you know, the crowd getting into it, whether it's for the sky, whether it's for the fever, and I think it's just going to be a great display of women's basketball. Um, I think you're going to see it on both ends of the floor. They're a great defensive team. Um, the way they rebound, the best rebounding team in the league. Um, but I think like we were driving by and there's just like so many lines outside of people already trying to get in. So um, I think people are just really excited to, you know, see this matchup and um, anticipate it. And obviously it's, you know, two WNBA teams right in the Midwest where I grew up and you know, I know how much they love women's basketball in this area. So I think people in this area are just really excited about this matchup. Um, and you, I mean, you can just feel it driving up in the bus so I think once everybody gets in the building it'll be special Are you expecting a lot of gold out there? <laughs> I mean yeah but I know ticket prices are, are pretty high so like I, I never expect that like I never expect people to, to pay for those and I mean I've seen some black and gold already and whenever we would come to Northwestern like there's just a lot of Iowa connections here in Chicago um, to the University of Iowa whether working here or uh, whatever it is so who knows I guess we're gonna find out I don't know I can't predict the future how much fun are, are games where the crowd is so involved, um, so energetic for you um, individually? Like, how much do you feed off of that and, like, yeah. play into that? Yeah, I mean, I love it. Like, I think that can definitely get you going as a player, and um, I don't know. I mean, I feel like that's kind of been the story for me over the course of the last two years, whether I was at Iowa or whether I'm here now. So I don't want to say it's something I'm used to because you never take, like, these crowds for granted, and... Um, but I mean, like when you hit a shot and like the crowd just goes crazy and then you can just kind of feel the energy building and they want you to shoot another one, like maybe that's a poison at times, but um, it's also really fun. And I think our team feeds off of it really well. I think that's why, you know, we've been able to start playing really well at home. We've been able to string those wins together and it's, it's also really good for our fans. Like they deserve it too. They're, they're coming out and supporting us, especially when we maybe didn't start the season very great. They continue to show up and sell out our arena every single night. So, um, yeah, I mean, I love it. But what about on, like, the opposite end when it's, like, you've got an opposing fan base that's, like, you know, feeding off of kind of, yeah, coming at the opposing team? And not just you individually, but, like... Um, I mean... Is that fun to put into her? I, I mean, I guess I don't... I feel like we always have a lot of people cheering for us, so I'm not sure if they're always totally against us at times. I guess I hope, like, basketball is really fun. Like, there should be people cheering for both teams. I don't think it should ever be a negative thing. Like, I don't think as a player, like, I'm not looking for the crowd to be negative toward the other team. Like, I don't think there's a place in basketball for that. I think, like, you know, cheer for your team. That's that's great. That's fantastic. But um, just appreciate the basketball that's on the floor because it's really good, and um, that's what's going to help this league grow further and further. He's a four-game winning streak for you personally. Uh, how have you felt? Do you feel uh, 
much more comfortable, I guess, have you felt? You're just kind of looking the key in these four games for yourself. Uh, yeah, I think like confidence is like a huge thing for our team. Like when you're able to string some wins together and you know feel some potential of like what we're able to do, and I think you can kind of tell. Our chemistry is starting to work a little better with one another. We are moving the ball a lot better. We're getting side to side. We're not just making one pass and trying to attack one on one. Um, I think our defense is starting to slowly improve. Our turnover numbers have gone down a little bit. Um, so I think it's just little things. And I think when we're able to hold teams under that 80 point range, we have a really good chance of winning. But also we've been able to score in the 90 point range, which is which is really good for us. So I think it's just the balance as well. Like we've had multiple people in double figures over the course of this win streak and it can't just be one player, it can't be two players. And then that poses a, a huge matchup problem for the other teams when we're playing as well. Uh, when there's multiple people as a threat, you can't really just sell out on one or two people. So I think all of that combined is just provides a lot of confidence for our team. Do you have to more comfortable just like passing reads wise or just like do you think that's what you've seen in these sports? Yeah, I mean, I think I, my reads have definitely gotten better. I think continuing to find a way to take care of the ball a little bit better and you know, a lot of that is like, for myself, I think there's a difference between a good turnover and a bad turnover. So you go back and watch and it's like, it's a good pass to make and maybe it just hit off her hands wrong and went out of bounds or maybe the defender got a little tip on the ball or whatever it is. So I think just going back and looking at those, but I think you can tell we're a little bit more on the same page and I think things are starting to slow down for myself a little bit too. Last one. When you talk, when you talk about that, how mm -hmm. important is the Olympic break going to be? Because you guys really didn't have a whole lot, <clears throat> a whole lot of time to practice and yeah. maybe now you're going to have whether it's three weeks, two weeks, three yeah. weeks, however long. Yeah. Yeah, it'll be huge. And obviously we'll get a little bit break at the beginning, but then we'll have quite a bit of time to just practice and really get better at what we need to get better at. And once we come back, like a lot, those games are going to be super important for the playoff push that we're hope we're going to be able to make. And um, it's I don't want to say it's going to be like training camp because I know it won't be like training camp, but that's probably like, you know, you get to get in there and work on things that you need to work on and go really hard and compete against one another and really – we haven't had an opportunity to do a whole lot of that since really we were in training camp. Yeah, we've been able to practice and have some hard practices, but a lot of times like you're just going through walk for, walk walkthroughs preparing for your next opponent. So I think for our inexperienced group that we are, it'll be huge.